So somebody told you that you have astigmatism, or is it astigmatism? Either way, there's something going on with your eye, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Hello, Dr. D here again. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. Here on this channel, I provide educational content about the eyes and reviews of vision products. If you're new here to this channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the button and the bell down below so that you never miss an update when we post videos. And while you're at it, take a look down in the show notes. I've got helpful links and information pertaining to today's video, and you can feel free to check that out anytime during the video today. I'll leave it right down there. So today I'm gonna to be talking about a uh, a cinnamon, a stigma, a stigma? A, a stigmatism, a stigmatism. <laughs> now you might wonder why I said it like that, but I encounter all kinds of interpretations of that word every day in my practice. It seems nobody's clear on what it, this condition is and how the heck you say that word. So it's a stigmatism. And today we're gonna talk about what it is, how it affects your vision, the different types, and then what we can do to correct it. All right, first up, what is astigmatism? So to give you the background on this, I want you to first think of the eye like a camera. The eye is receiving light all the time, and there's a series of refractive pieces to the eye. So you've got the cornea and the lens, and those two things make up the refractive system of the eye. When light comes into those two components of the eye together, it is then bent, and in an ideal world, if you have a perfect prescription, that light is focused to the back of the eye. When we talk about the eye and astigmatism, we're not referring to the whole thing looking like a basketball or a football. What we're referring to is right here. This is the cornea of the eye. This is one of the structures that is um, refracting the light or bending the light. So light is coming in all day long. It gets bent by this cornea and focused to the back of the eye in your macula. What's focused there will be sent to the brain and interpreted and that's how we see. And so in someone who does not have astigmatism, their cornea is perfectly round. It's just like a basketball. Okay, it has the same curvature in every single direction. When we talk about a cornea that has astigmatism, we're referring to that curvature having two different curvatures. So there's one aspect of the cornea that's steeper, much like around this way on the football, and the other aspect of the cornea which has a flatter curve. That results in two different refractive indices where light comes through and gets focused into two places instead of one. All right, so what I just described about the cornea being like a basketball or a football, that's in what we call regular astigmatism. There's also something called irregular astigmatism that doesn't quite play by the same rules. You like that? Did you like that? I caught it. All right, so quickly, irregular astigmatism is kind of a different story, right? So again, it doesn't play by the same rules as regular astigmatism. It can be due to trauma or surgery or even different disease processes. If you're interested in irregular astigmatism, I actually explain it in a previous video on scleral contact lenses. And make sure to check that video out. We'll link it right here and you can see that for more on irregular astigmatism. All right, so let's spend a little bit of time talking about astigmatism and what you, the patient, will experience as a symptom. I like to explain to my patients that, you know, most of us have heard of nearsightedness and farsightedness. So in terms of nearsightedness, you can see up close but not far away, farsightedness is the opposite of that. But astigmatism is a little bit different because it affects how the light is focused and it's focused into two different places. 
you end up having a little bit of blur at basically all distances. You'll notice if you have especially small degrees of astigmatism, blur at distance, like driving at night in the rain. So with small amounts of astigmatism, I hear all the time that driving at night in the rain is really, really difficult. The second thing is you might have some issues on the computer, just a little bit of like strain and blur over time sitting there with the uncorrected astigmatism. It can also affect you up close. Now what you'll see in your vision is often, um, it can be blur, but it can also be a pulling or stretching or even a ghosting of the letters. And that's all very common, even with regular astigmatism. So a couple of things about astigmatism. I want you to know that this is not a disease process, at least not in the case of regular astigmatism. If we're talking about irregular, um, that does result as a cause of disease, then sure, that's a different thing. But for most of the population with regular astigmatism, it's not necessarily gonna be progressive. It's not a disease process. It will not blind you or kill you or anything like that. It's just, the refractive state of your eye, the way your cornea is bending light, and it can be fixed with multiple means. All right, so let's talk about how we can fix astigmatism. First and foremost, glasses definitely will do the trick, and oftentimes we can get your vision very, very, very sharp and clear in glasses um, because they're so well controlled, right? They sit on your face, we can orient your axis of your astigmatism perfectly and get it nice and sharp and clear. The second option for correcting your astigmatism are contact lenses. I have so many patients who come and tell me, I have been told I can't get contact lenses because I have that astigmatism. And it's simply not true. We have so many contact lenses for astigmatism now, and even extended range contact lenses for those higher amounts of astigmatism. And so if you've ever been told that, I urge you to look into contact lenses again. Now, that being said, there's a couple of different types of contact lenses. So certainly soft lenses are the first ones that most people think of, and soft lenses definitely come in astigmatic corrections. So the second category of contact lenses that you can wear if you have astigmatism are what people refer to as hard lenses. And there's kind of two subsets of that category. One are called rigid gas permeable lenses and the other are sclerals. Again, I made videos about both of these topics and so we'll leave them right here. You can check out our sclerals video and then my video on, on hard contacts are rigid gas permeable contacts as well. Secondly, uh, if you have astigmatism, you can get refractive surgery. So there's a number of different refractive surgeries you could consider. And I would typically leave that to your specialist, your ophthalmologist, who's gonna perform the surgery. But broadly speaking, with astigmatism, that does not preclude you from getting LASIK surgery or PRK. Always see your eye doctor about this, but it's definitely an option to get refractive surgery when you have astigmatism. Another type of correction when you have astigmatism is when it comes time for cataract surgery. So there are actually cataract surgery implants that correct for toricity or for astigmatism right in the implant. And so it's possible that you've lived with astigmatism your whole life, you're about to get cataract surgery, you could certainly opt in for the implant that corrects your astigmatism. All right, so we have covered what astigmatism is, what you experience as the patient, and what can be done about it. It's important to remember that this is not a disease process, and so there's not really an emergent situation that it can occur with astigmatism, so there's not really a when to call your doctor in this video. Just get your typical eye exam every year, and you should be all set. All right, that concludes today's lesson in eye school. I thank you as always for joining me on this channel. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out our show notes below. I've left some helpful links down there and we'll see you next time.